Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max enthusiasts. In today's episode we are going to talk about Array Modifier in 3D Studio Max 2024. As you can see I already opened 3D Studio Max 2024 here. If you remember and if you are following my channel I already made a tutorial about how to use Array Modifier to create any type of wood floor. I will leave this link in the description so if you in case you need any type of wood floor to create in 3D Studio Max you can just use this. So if you are ready let's jump Jump in. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to create for now a sphere. Here I'll just make it 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters with SZ. And now in the modifier list, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to apply the array modifier. As you can see, in the moment that I apply the array modifier, he already used the grid modifier. As you can see here and he made five uh, so he made already five spheres on the x-axis right away so here i can add more or uh, less i can create an offset between them as you can see or i can use the spacing tool so i can tell them by knowing that the a sphere is 20 millimeters i can tell him that i want every 20 millimeters another sphere to appear so this is quite easy and uh, yeah, you can also put them in the center. So this means that from the center of the first sphere, he's going to create more spheres. So as you can see, he's keeping the middle point of the first sphere that I've created. The pivot of the first sphere is, is going to be the center of the next one. Okay, so now uh, I just created a couple of them on the X axis. I can do the same on the Y axis. So if I do that on the Y and with the center, my center stays in the same place and I'm just getting more spheres. So as you can see here, I used 10 spheres with the spacing between them of 20 and on the next one I have zero space in between them and I have seven, uh, seven spheres. All of them leaving uh, in the center of the original uh, sphere. So for the, on the next one I can use on the z-axis and I can also create here spheres. As you can see this is what you're gonna get so also here i have an offset that i can have if i want to as you can see and i can also have a spacing if i want to between them and i'm creating this so so far everything is quite easy and you can find all of this also in an older version of 3d studio max like 2023 with the late, latest update so what's next on the next menu we have transform here is telling us how many clones do we have so in totals we have a 490 clones and the next one is the position of the spheres on the transform so what's happening here here we can transform the whole thing by moving it to the left or to the right depending on where we need it we can also use a rotation so it's gonna just rotate in the x axis or in the y or on the z but to see that i'm just gonna make for now i'm gonna apply an ffd transformer and i'm just gonna go to my original one and i'm gonna transform this sphere so you can see a difference in mean, between them so now i'm gonna put the array in here this is how they are looking so in the moment that i'm gonna use the local rotation they're gonna rotate on the x and i can rotate them also on y and also on the z so as you can see now I can see uh, they are all so this is what the local rotation is doing so I'm gonna uh, go back to zero everywhere and now I'm gonna use the world rotation and the world rotation is rotating the whole object so it's not rotating the individual spheres that I had initially but it's rotating the whole thing but using as a pivot the original first sphere so if I hide this as you can see the pivot is here it's centered to the original sphere so in the moment that I'm applying this and I'm using the rotate is using that as a as a point and what else do we have here another thing and very important is the menu for the scale so i can scale my original object on the x axis or only on the y axis if i want to you can even make it less or i can do it also on the z axis this is quite nice because you can actually change your original object after you already made it okay the next thing is randomization so what's happening here i have also exactly the same uh, menus as here but not the world of course and i can change them i can randomize them 
I can randomize their position on the X. So as you can see now, some of them are moving on the X and some of them are just staying in the same place. I can also randomize them on the Y. And I can also randomize them on the Z. Oh so yeah, this is quite cool. I really like it. It's quite an amazing tool to have. And also I have a seed here that is one, two, three, four, five. And I, by changing this seed, I can get different types of randomization. As you can see, if I click on this button, I can just get different numbers on the seed and I'm just getting different uh, position of the of the spheres. So I'm just going to go zero, zero, zero here to the original thing. And also on the scale, I'm just going to go zero. Actually, I need to go 100, 100 to have my original object. And then we also can have a scale randomization. So I can randomize my objects, some of them, by using different axes as a randomization. Here I can apply uh, different materials IDs on the objects. So I can just say ignore existing IDs and I can go from one to 10 and create different IDs. So the, <clears throat> so the next thing that we're going to talk is the uh, material ID. To, sh to show you this, we need to, I need to create a material. I'm just gonna make a V-Ray material, but to do that, I need to load my V-Ray. So I just uh, loaded my V-Ray. I'm just gonna add a V-Ray material here. And now I will add a V-Ray multi texture, multi sub texture. And I'm gonna add this to the diffuse. I'm gonna make less object ID. And now I'm just gonna create some colors in key here. And I'm gonna change each color to a different color just to understand exactly uh, the randomness. Okay, so as you can see, we have totally different colors. Now I'm just gonna apply this to my object and I'm just gonna go here and I'm just gonna tell the program that I just want to have IDs from one to 10. Okay. I'm just gonna add a white background and I'm gonna start my uh, render. So as you can see, this is what uh, we have right now, but to have all the materials, we need to use element and in this way we're just gonna have uh, those uh, different uh, colors on each element so this is quite cool because uh, you don't need to use only different colors on the material multi texture but you can also have here different textures so on each object you're gonna have a different texture uh, or you can have different materials okay so this is what the material id is of course you can have random you can have or them ordered and first, middle, last. This is also has a face, a different seed where you can change different uh, colors. You can change the way the colors are spread on the object. And I can show you that right now. I'm just gonna start this all over again. So as you can see, oh, my ID is not changing. So yeah, if you use here face material ID, it's uh, yeah, just going to be a material ID here and if you go, if we go here now and we change the seed we are getting a different uh, seed every time and yeah this is quite amazing okay i'm gonna close all of this i'm gonna delete this and um, the last thing is the uvv it's an existing can be a clone or a clone number depending on the channel and the last thing and not the least and uh, the next one is the remove uh, we can randomly start removing pieces as you can see uh, this is quite nice uh, you can also use the seed you can also use an object for example i can use the sphere here and i can just drag this sphere inside and I can use this to remove oh, 
well it's actually what it did it made an intersection but if i use a revert an invert it's just gonna delete and then the last thing is the create button where you can create objects from all of this so if i really want to create objects i can just click this and it's just creating individual objects for each one of them so now i have 300,000 311,000 polygons so if i go with ctrl z okay i'm just gonna delete everything now and i'm just gonna make create a box and i'm just gonna apply again the array to this box is gonna just create right away on uh, five objects so the next one that we're gonna talk about is the radial what's happening with the radial i'm having a radius here and I can create objects according to the radius and this can be very useful as you can see uh, you have a start angle which is a zero of course so this means if I go to the top my zero point is here on the right side where it's starting so it's starting from the zero and it's ending at 360 so it's going from here going all the way back here in the same point but if i want i can start from 45 and i can end at 90 or 180. of course he's just, he's just gonna make all my objects i mean 20 objects between these two uh, angles so from 45 which is here and 180 which is here so if i add less objects you can actually see them oh uh, yeah you can have then multiple rows of course you can have an offset between these rows so the row in this case it's acting like an z axis and of course you have also the spacing in between that you can use to have a specific spacing uh, you can also stagger them this means in the case that you have a so they're just gonna go in between this is what stagger means in this case i'm gonna go less offset as you can see this is looking quite cool if i add another row in here it's gonna go exactly the same as the one that i had before and then the next one is gonna go like this so yeah you can create uh, amazing things only by doing this of course the next one is ring so you can have different rings starting from that point and using all of that as you can see this is uh, looking already quite uh, nice i would say with uh, an offset you can have it equidistant this is quite cool then again of course the transform which is working exactly the same as before but it's only made for the for the radial uh, array uh, you can have different phases if you want you, have, you can have local incremental alternating random incremented progressive this can be very useful uh, for creating different uh, objects or of course we have also the scale that is working exactly the same we have uh, the randomization rotation material id that is working exactly the same to remove and uh, the uv and to create object okay i'm just gonna delete all of this and also the turbo smooth i'm just gonna close it for now and uh, let's see the next one the next one is the spline so if i create a spline here going with smooth and smooth And then I'm just gonna go front view. And now I can just uh, follow this by picking the spline. As you can see, it's using the normal of the spline when it's adding more objects. So it's actually following the spline as you can see by using the normal of the spline uh, you can have use retain orientation so they're always gonna be uh, straight this is quite nice this um, is working exactly the same here you can you uh, have it in continue And then 
if it's working to animate all of this. But from what I see, uh, oh yeah, it's it's amazing that you can actually animate this. So yeah, you can actually uh, animate this. That is uh, quite uh, amazing. Um, okay, I will do the box all over again. I will create another line. Okay, I'll apply the array to go to the spline, big spline, add more objects. So yeah, you can uh, actually rotate the whole thing around the spline. As you can see, you can have variation, of course. So yeah, you can just play with it. Uh, of course, you have counts, which is the number of objects that you have here in count x uh, you can have relative offset uh, that you can have starting from the beginning till the end so i can play with that by working on here just gonna delete this for now and um, this can be also animated Uh, you can also have all of this on a surface so i'm just gonna create a plane fast and uh, i'm gonna move to the surface and i'm just gonna pick my surface so what's happening now to this surface on the intersection of different edges uh, he's gonna add one object so as you can see the moment that you have click the surface underneath you have vertex if i change this to face center it's gonna move each object in the center of every polygon and the last one you can have edge center so yeah you can have on each middle center of each edge another object uh, this content can be quite useful as you can see you can't add more objects so depending on how big is the object and how many edges it has you can add more or less objects so the number of objects is made according to the number of uh, divisions that uh, the object has and the last one and the most important is philotaxis What's Philotaxis? Well, Philotaxis is made by using something that is called the Golden Spiral. So the Golden Spiral is this. And this Golden Spiral is made by uh, using the, the Golden Number. And the Golden Number is made by the Golden Ratio. The Golden Ratio is actually this number here, 1.618033. Uh, this Golden Ratio, there is a lot, a lot of uh, things about it but if you really if you're really interested in how it's working this all these numbers uh, like we were all these numbers were actually discovered in the antiquity but the golden ratio was discovered by a guy who's called Fibonacci who realized he made he realized that if you take the zero and the first number and you create the second one by saying 0 plus 1 it's equal 1 and then 1 plus 1 equal 2 and 1 plus 2 equal 3 and 2 plus 3 equal 5 and so on and this is called the uh, Fibonacci list and uh, with, according to these uh, numbers you can create uh, this spiral and this spiral is made by dividing the first two numbers so 2 divided by 1 is 1.5 3 divided by 2, 5 divided by 3, and so on. And at one moment, you this, you're going to discover that the, that the uh, golden ratio is uh, 1.618. So this number, you can find it uh, anywhere in the nature, also in the human body. All our members, they are all made using this ratio. All these uh, numbers, you can find them everywhere in the in the nature and in us and everywhere. So this is why it's called the golden uh, uh, number. 
and the golden ratio is uh, this rectangle that has on one length the number one and on the second one 1.618 and with this uh, you can create this uh, beautiful golden ratio so what you do is actually you create a small uh, rectangle here and then you just multiply that and all of them are related to the, this number 1.618 and you can at the end you can draw this beautiful spiral by uh, connecting all the opposite uh, angles so, so this golden ratio is everywhere not even nature but also in the in the universe so if i write the milky way and golden ratio and i go here you're going to see that even the milky way and so our universe is made is made using these uh, proportions and golden ratio so you can see it everywhere in the universe also so this is quite an important uh, thing to know so this is how also this uh, philotaxis it's working so here i can add my objects so as you can see i can have a start radius which is here and i can also have an end radius which is further away if i'm using the axial this can go also on height uh, you can also have uh, cool part if you can also have them scale so they are also getting scaled starting from the middle to the end uh, this is something that it's really hard to create in uh, in 3d studio max without this because uh, this implies uh, a lot of mathematics behind because the objects are getting smaller so the the biggest ones that are in the middle they are just getting smaller as long as you go on the edge of the of the circle there is an imaginary circle in here and of course you can have also different phases here by moving closer or higher i don't know if you can animate this but let's see mm, yeah you can create also an animation so it can be really cool This can be uh, made also by the counterclockwise. And the cool part is that you can also use line. So if I have this line, I can tell the array modifier to pick my line as a distribution. So as you can see, I can just change my line and it's changing also my, uh, my object according to the line. This can be quite cool and you can create uh, amazing things with this this is quite a powerful tool uh, there are not that many of uh, programs out there that uh, they can do this of course uh, the most famous one is uh, rhino with grasshopper uh, you could definitely do this with grasshopper but other than that uh, there are not that many uh, programs out there that they can do this of course you can also transform the position the local position you can also scale them if you want or you can also randomize everything the position of the objects as you can see uh, the rotation of the objects let's say the z axis so yeah this is a quite very very powerful thing and also you can change the scale in the randomization you can have different objects with different heights of course you have a material id as usual uh, uv and you can also remove parts of it if you want you can also use an object and you can also create the object so yeah this is the array modifier in case you liked it please don't forget to subscribe uh, share it with your friends i'm gonna use this array modifier more in the future on the project that i'm going to make here on my uh, youtube channel please let me know in the comments uh, what do you think about this uh, array modifier and if you know any other program that other than rhino with grasshopper that has such a powerful tool i'm very curious about it and um, yeah see you in the next one bye